Hey guys, in this video we're going to look at um, how do we handle sounds on the web, how do we play them back, how do we convert them so they can play be played on the web, and how do we go beyond just playing audio files but play like pure sound while using a library. So we're going to go through the file formats that we're going to need, either um, WAV or MP3 or OGG, and how do we make sure that all of these work together, um, what kind of uh, triggers and events can we have for uh, audio elements, how do we deal with autoplay? That's a question that a lot of you have been having. And finally, uh, we're going to introduce Tone.js, a, a library that allows us to do like sound synthesis directly on the web. So let's get started. So starting with file formats, every audio element starts with audio. And then you have two possibilities. You can either put SRC here. So that would be Looking at our file here, Dean Blunt, the Redeemer, we could say Dean Blunt, the Redeemer dot wave. And if we reload our index, we don't see anything. We don't see anything because we don't have controls. So we have to show controls. We go back. We refresh, and now we have our audio element. Everything plays great. The issue is that our WAV file is actually 30 megabytes. We might not want to ask every single visitor to download 30 megabytes of data just to hear snippets of song. Um, so to do that, we're going to need to have to convert it to another format. Multiple ways you can convert something. Uh, my favorite is to use VLC. So if you open VLC and then you go to File, Convert, Stream, you can open um, the file you want to convert. You choose the profile that you want. We're going to use MP3 right now and the destination. And I'm going to make sure that I'm in the correct folder. Yep, comlab9, Dean, Blunt, the Redeemer, dot MP3. And I save it. It goes through the file. And so now we get our file that's recorded here as an MP3 file. So we're going to replace the extension here. And we're going to reload. Still works. Amazing. Cool. But so now the problem is that sometimes uh, some file formats might not be supported by all browsers. So how do we actually handle that? We handle that by adding another tag on line 9 here called source. Um, and source accepts an SRC, so the same thing as this guy, which we're going to put here. And we can remove this guy here. And a type. And in this case, we're going to say audio mpeg because the MP in MP3 stands for MPEG. If, for some reason, someone is using Linux and doesn't want to use a, a proprietary file format, they don't want to use MP3, we have other file formats that are as good, if not better, than MP3. One of those is called OGG. So we're going to convert our WAV file again to an OGG file format. I'm going to select Vorbis OGG here, and then Browse, Go to comlab9 and call it dblunt the redeemer.ogg. Save. And again, you see that I am um, converting from the WAV file, which has a higher sound quality than converting from the MP3 to the OGG. You, wanna, you always want to start from the highest sound quality and go down from there. And in the meantime, while it's converting, I'm going to add a new line. So I'm going to copy all of this. And .ogg, and this time it's going to be audio slash vorbis. Is it vorbis? Hmm. Let's see. Uh, type audio ogg element. So 
Sources. Usage. No, type audio. This guy. So we're going to do uh, type OGG rather. So now we have our two files that are loaded. If MP3 doesn't work, we're going to fall back to OGG. Let's check. We have Dean Blood the Rebeamer OGG right here. And we can check actually that our WAV file is 37 megabytes. Our other files, MP3 and OGG, are 3.4 megabytes. So that's a huge improvement. And just in case nothing works, we're just going to say, sorry, you do not support audio formats. Please come back later. As in, come back in the future when you can support audio formats. Let's go back to our sound on the web. Refresh. And it works perfectly. Cool. OK, so now you guys have seen why it makes sense to have source elements inside an audio element and not just have like an SRC here. That's it for file formats. Let's check now about autoplay triggers and events. A lot of you guys had uh, questions about autoplay. The, the issue is that now browsers sort of um, forbid autoplay. Uh, and they, everybody has agreed that it's really annoying to show up on a like, I don't know, CNN or Fox News website and then having uh, video news blasts uh, start broadcasting immediately. So now it's forbidden to, uh, to start audio. And it's forbidden to start audio. You can only start audio with user input. What does user input actually mean? Um, most often, it means at least scrolling or at least um, clicking somewhere. So we're going to see how we can do autoplay by um, hovering above an uh, a div. So we have, let's call it player actually. Let's call this player and then let's call, let's have a div here. Uh, class interactable id interactable and we're going to put our script at the bottom. Uh, oops. Script with a source called script.js. Okay, and so we're going to add a style as well, style.css, add it here, link, style.css. Okay, and so for uh, our dot interactable, we're going to say width 300, height 300, Top 50% left, 50% position absolute, order 2 picks, solid black. Cool, that's our div. Um, let's center it actually, let's do it properly. So 10%, 10%, and we're going to put this at 45, 45, cool, okay. In order to get rid of audio element, what do we do? We remove the controls part. Cool, so now we just have this guy. And what we want to happen is to have music play when we interact with this, right? So the first thing would be let interactable equals document get element by id Oops. interactable and then we do the same thing with our player Oops. and so for interactable we add an event listener and we say dot add event listener uh, mouse enter when do we do when the mouse enters? Player.play. Okay, so when we enter the mouse, we want to trigger um, the player. Let's see how this works. Refresh. Enter, leave, nothing happens. Let's open up the console. 
and I don't see anything right now. Nothing happens. Let's open up the console. And yeah, this is the error that we have to deal with. The play method is not allowed by the user agent or the platform, blah, blah, possibly because the user denied that permission. And you can see here that at this point, um, there's no autoplay that's allowed. Let's see what happens when we click on it. Oh, it works right now. So why did it work? Because I interacted with the page. So if I just refresh and I go there, it's not happy. If I refresh, I click anywhere on the site, I enter, then it's happy. Okay. Let's refresh. Cool. So now you have to kind of think about, it's not so much technical, it's about UX and UI, right? How can you fake a user input at some point so that the user has interacted with your site and you can then allow like play and pause? Um, one big trick for this is to have sort of like an opening page that says click here to enter website. You click here, you don't reload because if you reload, then the, you lose the permissions again. You click, some div like moves, uh, moves away and then reveals the website. And because the user has needs to click in order to get there, then you can um, do play and pause whenever you want. Right? Cool. So this covers autoplay. Let's just do the equivalent so that when we exit mouse leave and we're going to do player dot pause. Refresh, I click. Cool. That seems to work. Okay. So now, let's look at some of the elements that we can use, and some of the events that we can use in, um, in media elements. So we can actually monitor what is going on um, in, our, uh, in our file. And particularly, we can check if it is paused, or if it is played, and how, um, how far the current time is. So for instance, we can say player dot add event listener, pause, and then what are we going to do? We're going to say body or document dot body dot style dot color equals white. And if it is play, we're going to make it black. So we're going to change colors, whether it's paused or played. And I'm going to go here. I'm going to say body background color. So we start with black, right? No, we, we start with white. We start with white, and we're going to make it a little bit nicer. Transition 0 0.5 seconds, linear. Oh. Cool. And this guy needs to be white then. Or yeah, orange. I refresh, and then I click around. When it's playing, it goes back to black. When it pauses, it goes back to white. Right? Cool. What if I want to have um, to check at which point the current file is playing and do something based on that? So there's um, another event listener called timed update. Player add event listener time update update and now we can just say every time so this is fired every time um, essentially every moment the time changes uh, the playback time changes on the media element and so we can just check console.log the current time is, and then we add player.current time. And so every moment it plays, it's going to give us the time at which it plays.
So you can see how now that we has we have the uh, now that we have those numbers, um, we can decide on things that happen at particular moments in the track. Uh, so let's say after five seconds, I actually want to like um, change the border radius of the, of our cube of our uh, square. So I can say well if player dot current time is greater than, let's say, what, five seconds, let's do five, um, then we're going to say interactable dot style dot border radius equals 30 pixels. And again, to make it nice, we're going to add a transition. One second linear. Play it again. Oh, didn't interact. And our square has changed border radius, right? At the five second mark, something has happened with itch. So now that you have an understanding of how the, um, the events happen on media elements, I recommend that you guys go through the media element page on the Mozilla documentation, and you can look at the different kinds of um, events. So if there's an error, when data has been loaded, um, if it's current, uh, if it's starting to play, if it is playing, um, how much the progress is of loading it, is it started uh, downloading, has it completed downloading, time update every time something cha uh, the time changes, and volume change every time that someone is playing with the volume. So now for the last part. So now for the last part, we're going to go through Tone.js. So Tone.js is a library that allows you to do audio synthesis directly on the web. What I mean by that is that you don't actually need to have any sort of um, samples or actual sound files, even though you can use those with Tone. But you can also generate things, um, uh, generate sound just through math, essentially, right? Um, and so let's see how this works. We're going to start with the fact that we have our tone downloaded here, and we're going to link it to our file. So I'm going to say script source tone.js. Oops, tone.js. Um, and now we're going to create um, one new instrument. And then when we hit different keys, we're going to play different notes on that instrument. Okay, so we're going to say let synth or synthesizer equals new tone dot synth dot to master. So tone has this sort of like very sound engineering uh, metaphor in which you, the same way that sound engineers plug cables into machines, which then plug cables into other machines and so on and so forth. Um, Tone has the same thing. So you have like a synthesizer or a piano, and then you plug it into directly the master, so directly the loudspeakers. Or you could plug it into a reverb effect, or you could plug it into another like bus in which you can control multiple uh, instruments at the same time. So if you have any familiarity with sound engineering, Tone um, uh, copies those metaphors very well. And then we can just... Um, Call the function trigger attack release with the particular note we want, and the um, and the length. And so what we're going to do is that we're going to say document uh, dot body dot add event listener. And every time we hit a key, so key pressed with the event, first we're going to look at which key is pressed. So console.log event. I'm going to open this up again, refresh. OK, and so now I press W, E, R. And you can see they can be like lowercase w, lowercase e, lowercase r. And so if I say something like if event 
equals equals w else if oops, event dot key equals equals e and else if event dot key equals equals r and so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the synth so I'm gonna say hey if you play the w then trigger attack release and let's say I don't know anything about music um, C1 for an eighth of a note let's do a quarter of a note and then the second one is going to be C3 for a quarter of a note and the last one is going to be C5 let's see how this sounds I'm gonna refresh and I press W, boom, beam, beam. This was maybe a little bit low, so let's do, this one will be three, this one will be four, and this one will be five. I refresh again, and then. Okay, seems to work. And if we want to make it a little bit more interesting, we can just also add document dot body dot style dot background color equals orange equals and then this one is going to be I don't know cyan and this one is going to be pink and refresh and Here we go, and then you have a web-based instrument with a symbol in the middle. So you could theoretically improvise on top of it. I will let you guys explore the rest of the Tone.js library. You can do a lot of things with it. We have great examples, um, great demos. But in general, if you're trying to think, if you want to look into how you can develop um, instruments or actually do music or do sound engineering on the web, Tone is a really amazing place to start. So this is what we've looked at. We've looked at Tone to generate pure music. We've looked at the different kinds of events and uh, triggers and autoplay that you can have with media elements. We've looked at which kind of file formats you could insert on the web and how you should organize them in the source tags. And that's it for the intro to sound on the web.